sometimes I'm called in to do more social justice work or uh, how to be more active with our compassion, how to uh, actively mitigate some of the harm that's going on. And, um, you know, either, either focusing on the self or focusing on how we can help others, those aren't just short conversations. You know, I mean, they could add up if you have a half an hour here, a half an hour, but those are, they're longer than what we have here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, today, to, this evening, whatever time you're in, we're really talking about the first part, meaning the self-care part. And you notice the title on my presentation is Mindfulness and Cultivating Compassion for Self and Others. The, the self part takes some time, but the other part takes longer. And that's why I'm hoping that I get a chance to come back. But I will say this, let me just drop this in. When your self is off track, then you, you really don't fully uh, help others. You know, we have to get you okay, kind of like the oxygen mask on you, and then show you then how to serve and help others. That doesn't mean that before you're well, that you can't help others. But from what I've seen, um, yeah, because I can't say definitively that it's linear, but it takes all of the above. It takes you taking care of yourself because when you take care of yourself and you recognize things about yourself that need care, it can help you to then have compassion for others. Equally, having compassion for others can help you have compassion for yourself. So I don't want to minimize the other part. I have a whole big thing on that, and I hope I can share some of it today or come back to it. So the first thing I want you to be thinking about is as you're listening to this, to listen as an individual, which you are, but also you can listen to this as a professional, like if you're a teacher or a doctor, whatever you are, you can, you can take in this information in terms of how it relates to you in your profession. And you can also take it in from the vantage point of your organization, right? Your affiliation with your organization. And that'll make more sense in a second. So first, I just wanna look at um, everything that's going on in the world right now. And I have found that every time I do this presentation, I keep adding something in. So you're correct. We can't really just isolate and talk about my self-care without recognizing what's going on in the world. So we have the pandemic, all the bullet points under that, racism and the isms of the day, just horrific things happening. Uh, oops, sorry, the Ukraine uh, war, like all of the things that are going on in the world are having an impact on us. Thank you, Irene, um, are having an impact on us individually. Financial inequities, that's another one, I'm gonna add it. Well, there's so much, I mean, I keep adding. 
but I don't mind adding human trafficking. I'll get it from the notes. You get it. There's a lot that's going on. I just saw this this morning that uh, this quote, our bodies are not designed to absorb and process this much violence, loss, and grief. And I so resonate with that. And uh, I think it's timely that I'm introducing um, some of the self-care modalities to try to support us as we then go out to help others. So this is all about how to care for yourself and self-care. So I'd like you to write this in the chat. What are things that you've lost since COVID began? Or you could answer, what are things you're most worried about? Or what are you missing? And if you want to use human as your name, you may just drop that in the chat. Community, yes. I like didn't see my family for a year and a half. Lost hugs. A big one. And there is a way to slow down the chat. If you're reading, just put the cursor in and it slows down. Put the cursor up and in and it goes a little slower. Yes, music, live music, freedom. Yes, lots of regulation, swimming. That's a good one. Sharing closed air, that was a good one. Oh no, someone lost their younger brother. Human touch. Yes. So we're all missing a lot, but in this brief presentation, and you can keep things coming in the chat, um, but there are things that we have at the same time, let's see. So the first one I wanna say, let's see, what's mindfulness got to do with it? Well, what do I even mean by that? What I mean is, let me go back so that I can stop sharing for a second and see you. What's mindfulness got to do with it? I know we're using the term mindfulness. I use it, I'm a mindfulness instructor, but I try to get people to recognize that you already knew how to be mindful before we started talking about mindfulness, right? Because mindfulness is being present, being in the moment and not judging. So we already know how to do that, right? It's just today with all of the distractions that we have, it's I have to be intentionally present, right? In my own life and with other people. And so when I'm being mindful, when I'm being present, then I'm more aware of what, how I'm doing. I can be aware, I can pick up on the first signs of when I'm going over the edge or when I'm starting to feel too much stress or when I'm starting to feel anxious. When I'm present with myself, I, I identify things sooner rather than later. And so being mindful can help me not only be more aware of what's going on with other people or outside of myself, but it can help me be more aware of what's going on with myself. 
the next one is, I'm just going to scoot this along and not worry about format so much. What's compassion got to do with it? Compassion is a form of self-care because like in the meditation, compassion is recognizing suffering and feeling this urge to mitigate the suffering. Sometimes it's external, like I'm noticing all of the pain in the world. I've noticed the suffering that's going on in the world, and I'm feeling this internal energy and urge to mitigate the suffering. Now, it can, there's a difference in how we're framing compassion and active compassion, meaning you can feel compassion and want to mitigate someone's suffering and send them good wishes, or you could actually take action. You could do compassionate action. And in the field, we kind of differentiate. Um, the thing is, you first, when you're being mindful, it means you're being present to, you are paying attention to someone to even be able to notice if they're suffering or not. And then this moistening of the heart, right, will rise up in you and you'll want to mitigate the suffering. In societies, though, we have occurrences where the society tends to withhold compassion from some groups. Who, who would you say we withhold compassion from, like globally or society-wise? Let's put it in the chat. There are groups of people, well, yes. <laughs> okay, Putin, somebody said, disabled, yes, the black community, elderly people of color, you got it, right? So there are groups of people that we kind of tend to, withhold compassion from, especially if it's somebody that's offended us or hurt us or has a different political viewpoint. Um, so this notion of cultivating compassion happens over a lifetime. We're not instantly able one day to have compassion for someone, say, who's hurt us. But am I able to continue to cultivate this notion of compassion in my life over a lifetime so that I start to recognize the worthiness of this human being in receiving compassion. And what's my next one? I think I'll just tell myself so I don't have to go back and forth. I want to introduce what I'm calling the power of different things that you can do to take care of yourself. And the first one is the power of closing your eyes. I know that one sounds simple, but just close your eyes for a moment. You notice most meditations start off with closing your eyes. There's a reason for that. For one, your body is already to some degree and trauma is, is an exception. I'll, I'll put that to the side for a moment. But normally when you close your eyes, your body is used to you closing your eyes to go to sleep. So the body immediately starts to relax unless you've experienced some trauma associated with closing your eyes. So anytime you are activated and it's safe to do so, just closing your eyes can bring in a certain amount 
of peace. The power of closing your eyes, the power of your breath. Already introduced that a little um, more specifically. There's kind of different kinds of breath. Maybe I will show you this one. Let's see. Scoop my screen over. The power of your breath. So there's all kinds of breath. I don't have time to really go over each one, but I'll go over them really quickly. One, just taking a deep breath. You already know that it can calm the amygdala and a few good deep breaths. We really actually do this naturally. If we have a friend that's panicking or really upset, we'll usually put our hand on their shoulder. Okay, take a deep breath, right? We already know to do that. It's just, we don't often do that for ourselves. So taking a good deep breath can calm the amygdala, calm you down. Affectionate breathing is just kind of an emotional attachment to the breath, consciously soothing yourself, knowing that you're taking these breaths affectionately on behalf of yourself. Soft belly breathing, putting your hands on your belly, noticing coming in. Thank you, Diana. Big inhale, notice the tummy pooching out. Exhale, tummy coming in. Another way to relax. I'm noticing I'm relaxing just doing these breaths. Ocean breath is using your imagination. Um, the tide is coming in, that's your in breath. The tide is going out, that's your out breath. Tide is coming in, your in breath. Tide is going out, your out breath, etc. The power of taking a moment, the power of the pause. If you're ever really stressed out in a meeting or at work or with uh, you've gotten in an argument with a friend or a family member, the power of taking a moment. Take a pause, step away, take a break, a respite. And one of the things I introduced earlier when I was asked, and now you're human, so I only know your human name, is what to do in the moment. Soles of the feet. Kind of bring your focus there. It'll help ground you. You can have what we call a here and now stone. I have a little crystal here that I keep. The power of taking a moment. I'm whizzing through these. The power of stepping away. You're getting burned out, but you're still staying in the fire. Step away. The power of stepping away. I love this one. The power of awe or imagination or visualization. So I want you to think of something. Oh, I love that. Souls of the feet. Yes, yes, Elizabeth. The power of awe, imagination, and visualization. What do I mean here? I want you to think of something that causes you to feel awe. I saw just a flower the other day, yesterday, had to take a picture of it. It was so intricate inside. It was an art piece. And I was awed by it. And in that time of being awed, I felt no stress. Ch yes, childlike curiosity, a monarch butterfly, the supermassive black hole. So why am I bringing it in like this? 
you can recall something that causes you to feel awe when you're stressed or sad, right? It's a way to bring your attention to something that naturally is calming for you. Again, it's kind of using your imagination and it could be a sunset, a sunrise. It could be a ladybug. It could be a butterfly. It could be a hummingbird. It could be Yosemite and the falls, Mount Shasta. These are all here in California. Yes, it's a way to regulate yourself and help you to regulate with others. Oh, I love that flying fish. Another thing is what we call unique approaches to difficult emotions. Going through this kind of quickly, you can find this on um, from Kristen Neff and Mindful Self-Compassion website, but we call it Name It and You Tame It. Research has found that just naming what's going on already causes the stress to go down. Sometimes we don't want to name it. We don't want to recognize that we're stressed out. We kind of fight against it. But in fact, naming it will help you to tame it. What do I mean? I feel really stressed today. I need a little care. Right? Feel it and you heal it. I know these are kind of corny phrases, but they can help. Feel it and you hear, heal it and soften, soothe, and allow. I'm hoping on the presentation, maybe you'll get the slides or I can send those out after. The power of loving kindness, being your own best friend. This can be a lifesaver. I've had a lot of trauma in my life as a child, teenager, adult, young woman. And, um, you know, have found myself in some not so good situations. But I will say this. I remember where I was standing when it happened that I got a light bulb that said, be your own best friend, right? Be your own best friend. Do what you would suggest to your best friend and it saved my life. So you want to be as good of a friend to yourself as you would be to your best friend. The power of loving kindness towards yourself, being your own best friend. So everybody just really quickly in the chat, I know we're coming up on time. Tell me something that you really appreciate about yourself. Love it. Sense of humor, kind, creativity, good listener. Woohoo. Openness, loyal, resilient, sensitivity, curious. Yay, yes. Goofiness. I saw that. Grit. Yes. We want to remember these things you know, from day to day, from week to week, from year to year, especially when we kind of start knocking ourselves. What's next? Which leads into what you've just done, the power of compassionate and appreciative language, discovering your own compassionate voice. What would you say to yourself if you're being compassionate to you? you're being compassionate to you, how would you talk to yourself? The power of living deeply, 
living your values. You know, when I'm counseling people or coaching, a lot of times they have gotten off track of what they value and they're kind of living a, a life without values that they believe in deeply. And then they're kind of wondering why they're depressed. So it's a good exercise to restate to yourself what you value. What are the things that you value? And to make sure that more of your day, more of your days are spent living deeply or living your values. The power of filling up your vessel. And I spoke to my human, there she's back, C. Robinson a few minutes ago about the importance of filling up your vessel. Let's put that in the chat. What are things you do to fill up your vessel so that you can pour into your family, pour into your job, pour into your friends, pour into your grandkids, pour into your pet? Oh, pet sit. Love it. Meditate, hot bath, walk in nature. So we got to put all those things on our to-do list, right? We got to make sure we're doing the things that center us and heal us. Perfect. Oh, I love that. I enjoy every meal. Woohoo. That was a good one. And so here are some of the things that I do to fill my cup. Listen to music, go for a walk, pet my dog, soothing touch. And here's one I want to show you the power of soothing touch. The resource is also Christian Neff. Um, you may be familiar with these. I'm going to do them kind of quick, and I hope you do them with me. In meditation, you can do these with your eyes closed, but for now, however you like. So this is offering yourself soothing and supportive touch. One hand on your cheek. And here's when I've used this. I've been in Zoom meetings all day and I'm starting to crack. And I'll just put my hand on my cheek and it looks normal because everybody puts their hand on their cheek at one point. They don't know that I'm using supportive touch. I can't take one more second in this Zoom session. One hand on my cheek, kind of offering, or even cradling. Oh, I love that. Yes, hands in prayer, all those things. Cradling my face, hand over my heart. You can even go pat, pat, pat. I've done a few pat, pat, pats at a staff meeting could rub, that might be harder to pull off in a meeting, but rubbing one hand or two. And you know, even as I do this, I can feel myself kind of surrendering to my own touch. I'm, I'm feeling touched by me <laughs> as I touch myself right now. One hand, can be on your heart, one on your tummy. When I do that one, it's I feel a lot of support. Maybe it's the way I'm holding myself. I think that was one of the things I missed, the real hug. You know, we're scared to hug right now. That's maybe it's your family. Both hands on your tummy. Gently stroking your arm. Like, gosh, I had a tough day today. I'm worn out. Giving yourself a gentle squeeze and hug. And a good deep breath, even closing your eyes. You can put them together. 
right? I added this one, the power of authenticity. Oh, I love that massaging the feet. The power of authenticity and embodiment, being who you really are, having the courage to be you. The more you are you, the more well you will be. The less you are you, the more unwell you will be. Of course, you've got to figure out who that is, but I have found that the more real and authentic I have become, um, it's opened up doors for me to just be myself, just be real. So, not that you have to pick one, but if you were going to commit to doing something moving forward, or maybe a few of them, or maybe the whole list, but for now, put in the chat what kind of touched you or you thought to yourself, hmm, I'm going to do more of that one. Let's share that in the chat. Power of awe, breathing, soothing touch, stepping away. Closing your eyes is magical. That won't work so well. Breathing, being me. Who knew? Yes, validating myself. Yes, folks. Yes, people. Yes. Let me stop. Oh, I did want to show one thing and then a few minutes. I This will be in the slide set. So these are just some apps that I use that um, kind of keep me reminded. I do my own meditations and meet with groups like this, but I found some of these uh, helpful. And here are all of the people I've studied with, right? That have, that have contributed to who I am today. And, you know, the fact that I even had this opportunity to come and share with you. So let me stop sharing, come back so that I can see you all. I'll, I'll figure out how to get the slides to you. I'm not sure. My, my co-host, my folks will help me figure that out. I know that was quick. Um, yeah, I hope it was okay for you. And we've just got a few minutes. He told me I'd go five minutes over, but try not to uh, go much over that. But I'm just wondering, how are you doing? You good? Any burning questions? Thank you, everybody. Yes, San, 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 San. Yeah, so I'm very much touched by um, this topic of self-compassion, which I'm doing really, really bad. My question is that sometimes I feel when I'm trying to give myself more compassion, it feels, it ends up with like a self-pityness, if you know what I mean. Like yes, I do. I, I, I feel suffer and then I thought and thought and then becomes crying and I feel like it's almost like do the opposite. I'm becoming more depressed afterwards. Okay. So one clue is when you're pitying yourself or someone else, you can kind of look at it like you're looking down in a hole. Mm -hmm. You're down in the hole and you're going, oh, poor you, right? Yeah. You're kind of looking down at someone or are you looking down at yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not compassion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're slipping into pity, you want to strengthen your compassionate muscle, right? And mm -hmm. say, no, I, I'm hurting. 
This is a legitimate hurt. I need support. You want to give yourself support so that you can get back up to level ground. Mm -hmm. Kind of answering this kind of quick, but I'm hoping I could spend a lot more time on it. But does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think this is something I need to strengthen and, and really practice more. I teach Thank mindful self-compassion classes. So look for me out there, out and okay. about, okay? We could spend Thank a you. bit more time. Okay. I just want to say one more thing about being more active and supporting other people and building this global compassion um, that we all want to see and caring for other people. Um, I, I'm beginning to see and feel that the more that we have the capability to um, have compassion for ourselves, it does kind of open up a way to have more compassion for others. And, and I'm not saying it's a straight line. Sometimes having compassion for others can help us cultivate compassion for ourselves. But I would say just in these last moments, since I don't see any hands or questions, just um, continue being you. I'm so encouraged. That's what I am. I'm so encouraged to see all of you here, especially those of you who have stuck to the end, but even those that were here for five minutes or 10 minutes or the beginning, because it's saying we want to see a better world for ourselves and for our children and our grandchildren and um, you know, all the people around the world that are hurting or suffering in some way. We all want a better world. Bravo to everyone. So much love to all of you that you are joining Rick on this uh, journey. And I'm so blessed that he um, asked me to, gave me the opportunity really to, to come and share. And I just am moved by your presence. And I feel you as well. And so I'm, I'm just encouraged that as we continue to cultivate our hearts, that we'll also get the insight we need to solve some of these global challenges we have. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>